And joining me in the studio this morning to discuss this further is legal practitioner, Sandra Alex Egbero. Thank you, Sandra, for joining us. And also still with us this morning is Lulu Elegbe, a political analyst. Thank you very much, Lulu, for staying with us. Now, this is it. Um, as there's, there's an oath that the medical practitioners took to save lives. But we've seen cases whereby people with gunshots, and in the case of the unfortunate incident, um, she was stabbed, get to the hospital, mm -hmm. and there's a demand for police reports. There is a law that has been passed, but we don't see the enforcement of this law. How do you react to this, Sandra? So, um, I think like every law we have in Nigeria, the problem we always face as a country is implementation. There aren't enough implement implementation strategies that are put in place to ensure that doctors comply to you know, the, the, the already stipulated, stipulated laws. So for instance, the National Health Act, it was passed in 2015 by um, then President Goodluck um, Ebele Jonathan. He signed it into law and up until now, this happened in 2019, that's um, up four years after, we still see a situation whereby doctors are flaunting the laws. And you know, it's, 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 it's a sad story that we Nigerians are facing. Now, are there, are there any exceptions why this should not be the case across the boards in our hospitals, Lulu? No, I don't think so. Because um, where you have someone coming in with um, life-threatening injuries in some cases, it's the, I mean, just by the doctor's oath alone, they should treat the person, regardless of anything else. But then there are other sides to this as well. I think, personally, I think that where hospitals see that this case is probably too critical for them, or maybe they don't have the right equipment, they, don't, they, they just can't deal with the case, they start to make, rather than saying we cannot deal with this, then they come up with the excuse of police report. They know that they don't need the police report to treat the patient, but they also know that they don't have what it takes to treat that patient. So rather than admitting that in a, in a number of cases, that's what they say. They say it's the police report. Then there's the other, there's a flip side of it, which is uh, I have a doctor friend who's told me before that they actually face, some of these hospitals still face problems from the police if they treat, for example, gunshot victims. And if somehow the, pol the police get involved the police start to disturb them, start to harass them, basically. Why did you treat this person without a police report? Yeah. Even after telling them that, well, the law says we should treat them. Because it's, it's simple. What the law says is that if someone comes in with a gunshot injury, for example, you treat them and then the hospital calls the police to come in. And that's what you should, that's how it is in every other normal country on this planet. So this idea of, and for the life of me, why it took till 2015 for this to be signed into law in the first place is beyond mm -hmm. me. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah. in a way, where you have um, the police who have done this for decades, and then from 2015, you expect that it's going to stop straight away. It's not wrong. It won't stop straight away right. because they've spent decades practicing this, um, this whatever this is supposed now, to be. Now, that's it. Son, you're a legal practitioner. Maybe you throw more light on this legally. Now, that's, that's, that's an anomaly and a dichotomy between what was passed and what is still being experienced. And we've had cases, people who walk past bodies on the road um, that they could have saved, taken to the hospital. But I don't want to take this person to the hospital because I might get arrested. How do we begin to put all of this together to, to make the society function better when it comes to situations like this? So, um, first of all, I, I need to point out the fact that there is no where, even prior to the enactment of this law in 2015, there was no where it was stated that the doctors would have to refer back to the police, um, to the police officers to get a report before treating patients. As I said, doctors have sworn an oath, so they have a duty of care to every and any patient who's, ad, who's, who's brought into your hospital to administer treatment. So if they find us, themselves in situations whereby they probably cannot, they do not have the necessary equipment to, you know, to take care of that patient, it's inherent on them that to you know, provide the first aid service first and then refer to a better hospital. Yeah. So in, in situations where, we've, uh, where we see um, passerbys, you know, for gore, um, the distressed persons, is that, is also that sense of, 
I don't care attitude and the sense of knowing that bringing such person to the police, to the hospital for instance, you're being arrested or you're being held in, in hostage. So there is no, um, the good Samaritan in any man has been, you know, stripped off of them because of the situation where we find ourselves. So, I, I mean, the law has been passed. There are penalties. There are penalties that um, the doctors will face if, if such practice is not adhered to. Yes. It's important for citizens of Nigeria to be abreast with these laws, to know what, you know, know what the law stipulates and know their rights. That's what's going to solve the situation. Right, there now, is no uh, public awareness of that particular law, and that's the, that's the case. Okay, now lastly, Lulu, our, our government is always in this habit of thinking just passing the laws fixes the problem. Mm. How do we ensure strict compliance? It, it's very key by all hospitals, regardless, even without anybody inspecting those hospitals, they know, you know, it is, it, I'm duty bound to make sure this is done. Mm. And again, should it just be the cases of gunshot, um, stab, knife stabbing? Mm. Should it be in all cases as long as life is involved and it is an emergency? Yeah, as long as it's life threatening, as long yeah. as it's an emergency, they should. The, the, reality is, the reality is that I think, like you mentioned, even before that law, there was nothing that said you had to go and do that in yes. the first place. Let, let's start with that. Yeah. But in terms of what do we do, I think the only thing we can do as citizens at this point is to report this every time it happens. Because the only times, the only time, well, maybe not the only times, most of the times that the government seems to act is when things get blown up on social media, for example. So if victims, if families of victims are doing a lot more of that, We'll hopefully start to see some action in that regard right. because this is, is just. I mean, this is just going to. Go, is, this is just going to go on. And as long as we are not um, doing our part by reporting it, when it, because one of the times that um, someone complained about something like this to uh, um, to my friend I mentioned is a doctor. He, um, one of the things that he said was that well, people don't report these things when it happens, and that's unfortunately that's true. But again, people don't report it because they don't think anything will happen if they do. Right. So Alex, um, Sandra, Alex, a girl, legal practitioner, thank you for joining us this morning on News on the Hour. And also Lulu Elegbe, political analyst, thank you, Lulu, for your contributions and for joining us.